Tigers in Africa. If this phrase catches you off guard or feels a little strange, well, welcome to the club. Yet, for some reason, it just seems so cool. Like, it actually kind of fits. I know that it sounds bizarre and I hope I don't lose you as I share some thoughts on Tiger Canyon, the great new destination I recently got to visit. According to all of the experts, the clever folk out there, tigers have never existed on African soil. The exact reasoning behind this still seems to be largely misunderstood. What a shame though. I can completely imagine photographing tigers on the red dunes of say the Kalahari or beneath the stunning forest canopy and mana pools. What a sight that would have been. That remains a dream as tigers have never walked Africa's national parks or private game reserves and, as you know, likely never will. I recently got to visit a special place in the South African Karoo. It's called Tiger Canyon. And yes, they have both tigers and a stunning canyon. The Karoo constitutes a large portion of the South African landscape and is visited far less frequently for safari purposes than regions like the Sabi Sands or the Kruger National Park. The early adventurers and travelers on the way to the High Felt unanimously denounced it as, listen to this, a frightening place of great heat, great frosts, great floods, and great droughts. Now that just about describes the Karoo for you. Most South Africans though know the Karoo as that vast space of nothingness you drive through on the way to Cape Town. Sound about right? I thought so. Now I must say, I was pleasantly surprised by not only the tiger experience, which I'll get to in a minute, but also by the vast amount of life and beauty found within the Karoo ecosystem. Before Tiger Canyon was established some 20 years ago, all of the land was dedicated to sheep farming. Since then, life has bounced back in a staggering way. The bird life is diverse, ranging from small LBJs, that's uh, little brown jobs for those who don't know, to large Veru's eagles and many more. On the open plains and rocky hills, you'd find impala, kudu, eland, zebra, springbok, and much more. The smaller critters were also fantastic to get to know a little bit better, Yellow mongoose, ground squirrels, and even meerkat were out and about all day long. At night, you can see spring airs around just about every corner, and then something I've never seen before, black-footed cat. They can also be seen from time to time, and in fact, local guide and friend A.D. Stunder has seen over 20 of these incredibly rare cats over the past 18 months at Tiger Canyon. Mind blown. We actually caught sight of one's eyes at night, but never got close enough. You bet I'll be back for exactly that. Okay, the point is the Karoo is incredibly special and has so much to offer the first time visitor. I'm guessing that'll be the bulk of you listening to this. Now, onto the tigers. I don't want this to turn into a justification of my visit. That's not the goal here. I've never been before and like many of you here, uh, I've only ever heard of this place. I've also wanted to visit but was never fully comfortable with how exactly I felt over the idea of tigers in Africa. And that's fine, I think as humans, we're often skeptical of things that are not the norm, unfamiliar, maybe different. It's kind of in our nature to do that. But I also believe that we should never judge a book by the cover, never form an uninformed opinion. In fact, just stay clear of opinions in general because it seldom leads to anything good. So my good friend and head guide at Tiger Canyon, Daniela, gave me a call and asked me to come over and visit. Daniela is an experienced guide. We met way back during my guiding days at Singita more than 10 years ago. She's since done incredible work as head guide at Otzala in the Republic of Congo and now happily calls Tiger Canyon her home. I took her up on the offer, needing to see and experience this place for myself. I'm glad that I did. I will say off the bat that Tiger Canyon will not replace India for the tiger experience I offer to my guests. That's not the ultimate goal. I definitely would love to take guests to Tiger Canyon, and you'll understand once I'm done with this conversation. My plans are also not to stop visiting India for tigers, leopards and more. I'll be back in India again next year, believe you me. I just need you to understand that. 
India is magical and will always hold a special place in my heart. But the idea of tigers in Africa has certainly caught my attention, as it has yours. Most of your concerns were centered around the following point. Tigers do not belong in the wilds of Africa. And yes, you're correct. They don't. And the plan here is not to release them into these regions. This is for many reasons, including obvious conflict with the existing animals and the disturbance of the natural balance of things. So there you go, Tiger Canyon. So there you go, Tiger Canyon will not be releasing tigers into Kruger National Park or the Okavango Delta. For Tiger Canyon, the primary goal is driven by sheer passion and a love for the species. I believe the dream is to have a population of wild free roaming tigers completely self-sustained with territorial habits, reproducing and living a wildlife in a magnificent ecosystem that's remarkably similar to Ranthambore for a good part of the year. Let's face it, we humans have not done the greatest job in taking care of our natural areas and the animals that inhabit it. Here in Africa, rhinos are being poached to the brink of complete extinction. Pangolins, yes, pangolins, which most of you have not ever even seen in the wild, are the most trafficked mammal on this planet. Listen to this. The largest pangolin bust on record happened in February 2019, a little over two years ago, in Borneo. Authorities found 30 metric tons of pangolin products, including 1,800 boxes of frozen pangolins, an additional 572 pangolins frozen separately, 60 live pangolins, and over 360 kilograms of pangolin scales. That is shocking, and I share this with you because, wow, what terrible job we've done of looking after our wild animals. Now, what about tigers? According to the WWF, tigers have lost an estimated 95% of their historical range. Now, that too is frightening. Their habitats have been destroyed, fragmented and degraded by human activities. Clearing of forest for timber, agriculture and road networks pose more serious threats to tiger habitat. Fewer tigers can survive in small scattered islands of habitat. Could lead to inbreeding and it makes remaining tigers far more vulnerable to poaching as they venture beyond protected areas to establish territories and to look for food. People and tigers compete more and more for space. The search for prey and territory leads them into human habitat and there's often conflict that quite often results in death for the tiger. Also, current estimates indicate that more than 8,000 tigers are held in so-called tiger centers in East and Southeast Asia. Approximately 5,000 tigers live in captivity in the USA alone. Now with less than 4,000 tigers truly living wild in their natural habitat, these statistics are absolutely terrifying. Now, taking this into consideration, think again what drives the wheels forward at Tiger Canyon. Yes, it's different. It takes some getting used to. It's not natural in the way that we understand what is truly natural in today's world, what truly is void of human impact in one way or another. Very little, if any. I believe that Tiger Canyon would love to have a viable population of tigers, wild and free, that could one day perhaps, should the need arise, assist parks in Asia with more tigers to supplement existing populations. It's a noble cause and I genuinely Hope it never comes to that, said with all due respect to Tiger Canyon. But for me, I see no problem with what the team at Tiger Canyon are doing. It's not interfering with wildlife in other national parks. And in fact, with more funding, they'll be able to buy back more sheep farms, converting them into pristine natural karoo and allowing more opportunity for natural fauna and flora to bounce back. That in my books is a win any day of the week. I do believe they have the responsibility of sharing more often with you as their audience as to what they're doing and why they're doing it. I've had some good conversation with them. They have a story to tell and they should do so more effectively. I think this alone will go a long way towards eliminating misinformation on opinions formed, opinions with no foundation. I'm all ears when it involves the best interests of the animals I so love to see and photograph. I'm sure you are too. I'll always love India and will continue to visit to bring guests across 
to tell the story of the tigers in those magnificent national parks. I also believe there's a place for Tiger Canyon in Africa. They've worked incredibly hard to get to where they are today. They have good intentions and ultimately we all, you included, we share the same ultimate goal. And that is to preserve the tiger and in this case also the karoo for future generations to experience and to enjoy. I trust you enjoyed this and I look forward to reading your comments and to engaging on this a little further. It's a great conversation that should be approached with open eyes and in the best interest of our wild areas and animals. This is merely my opinion and my thoughts after my first visit. I'd welcome you to connect directly with Tiger Canyon should you have questions of your own or leave them a comment uh, in the comment section below. I'm sure they'll respond. Still, the best way to find out what it's about is to actually go and visit. Thanks again for watching and for listening. My name is Marlon DeToy, and I look forward to talking with you again very soon. Bye-bye.